Hello and welcome to News Now on TV360. I am Thelma Okoro. The federal government has filed an application before the Federal High Court in Abuja seeking the protection of prosecuting witnesses against the embattled leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, Namdi Kano. At resumed hearing on Friday, counsel to the government, David Kaswe, also filed an application before the court for a secret trial and also prayed the court not to allow the media reveal the identity of his witnesses. He said his request was important due to the protests and violence that had followed the arrest and detention of Anamdi Kano. The defense counsel, Chuksumwoma, however, opposed all his applications and urged the court not to allow a secret trial. Kano and two others are standing trial for treason, management of an unlawful group, smuggling of radio transmitter and firearms. Following its intensified war against insurgents in Nigerian troops say they have discovered and destroyed a medicine outlet and major market operated by Boko Haram insurgents. The Nigerian troops of seven garrison comprising of 102 battalion and armed forces special forces carried out a joint clearance patrol on suspected Boko Haram terrorist locations at several local government areas of Borno State. The troops discovered Boko Haram terrorist camps, patent medicine outfit and major market at Golumba, northeast Nigeria. More than 195 captives were also rescued at various locations of Borno State, northeast Nigeria. Chief of Defense Staff Gabriel, General Gabriel Olonisaki has emphasized the commitment of the Nigerian Armed Forces to the protection and welfare of children. The CDS was speaking when a group of representatives from the United Nations Children Emergency Fund, UNICEF, paid him a courtesy visit at the defense headquarters in Abuja. General Olunisaki, who was represented by the Chief of Administration at the Defense Headquarters in Abuja, Rear Admiral Babalola Egbedina, pointed out that the Nigerian military always pays special attention to children and their well-being, even at critical theaters of operations. He stated that the Nigerian Air Force always handles children in accordance with UNICEF, UNICEF protocol and with careful observation of the law of armed conflict to safeguard the children and the vulnerable. Minister of Budget and National Planning, Senator Udoma Udo Udoma, met with various state commissioners for economic planning in a view to address the emerging socio-economic policies affecting governance in all parts of the country. At the meeting, the minister hinted that the federal government is planning to use the 2.2 trillion naira proceeds from the Treasury Single Account to fund the nation's 2016 budget. Udoma also said the meeting was designed to review the extent of implementation of the resolutions reached at the last joint meeting with the National Council on Development Planning held in Oka and Amber State in October 2015. Nigerian Nobel laureate Wally Shoink has described the current state of the nation as consequences of past misrule. Shoinka, who was speaking during a visit to the Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, said Nigerians who expect to see a bonanza economy in the next few months to one year had better have a rethink. According to him, the country's recovery is a process that may take quite a while to achieve. Uh, the economic condition of a nation, of a people, does not deteriorate overnight. Something came before that deterioration. A certain prolonged and unchecked process of attrition, which was neglected in the past, is now knocking on the door. The consequences of past misgovernance, in other words, is what we are undergoing right now. So don't look to see a bonanza economy for me, in the, in the next uh, few months to a year, recovery is going to take quite a while. But at the same time, we must rely on our objective economic experts to tell the government when it is going wrong, when it's taking certain measures which might just compound the problem you know, and in the end make the people the ultimate victims. So, yes, I agree with uh, those who say the economy is bad. I think it's obvious. Uh, and, uh, in fact, it's so bad, in my view, that I think that uh, the president should call an emergency economic conference, which experts 
will be invited. Uh, consumers, producers, uh, labor unions, um, university uh, pro uh, experts, professors, etc., etc. I think we really need an emergency economic conference, a rescue operation, bringing as many heads together and then plotting the way forward. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, has declared that the renewed anti-corruption war will ensure no escape route for any indicted Nigerian. The anti-grab body disclosed that adequate measures had been put in place to ensure that Nigerians who store public funds and take them abroad would be forced back home and prosecuted. EFCC zonal head South South Ishak Sali, who made the disclosure during a stakeholders meeting with pipeline surveillance contractors organized by the Nigerian army in Port Harcourt, the river state capital. According to him, the President Muhammad Buhari led administration had demonstrated strong political will to fight corruption, even as he recommended stiffer penalties for whoever is guilty of corrupt practices. Barely a week after closing its case, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission has filed amended charges against the spokesperson of the People's Democratic Party, Olisa Metu. At resumed hearing on Thursday, prosecuting counsel Silvanus Tahi prayed the court to direct Metu to take a fresh plea to the amended charges, saying that the new charges will have no material effect on the earlier charges brought against him. The defense counsel Onyechi Ikbazu did not object his plea, and the PDP spokesperson repeated his non guilty plea to the amended seven count charge and also entered a no case submission. After deliberations, the justice adjourned the case till February 25, 2016, to allow Met to defend his no case submission through a written address. People's Democratic Party about their decision to appoint Ali Modi Sheriff as the party's new chairman has been generating new and different reactions. One of such is from Ganduji, the Kano State Governor, who warned that the decision may come back to haunt the party. Sheriff, a former governor of Borno State, was appointed the new chairman of the PDP by the National Caucus of the party on Tuesday. Speaking while answering questions from journalists at the monthly APC Media Roundtable, Ganduji said the national chairman of the PDP, Ali Sheriff, would end up working for the ruling APC in 2019 against his claim that the PDP would reclaim power in 2019. I think he's a, he's a cross capita. He is always on the move in changing from one party to another. Even when he was in AMPP for eight years, he was working for PDP. And even the, the APC started with him. And then he went back to PDP. In fact, we are happy. In the long run, he will work for us. <laughs> that is what I believe. We are happy because we believe in the long run, he will work for us. <laughs> President Muhammad Buhari has named the Oni of Ife, Eniton Adeyeye Ogunwusi or Jaja II, as the Chancellor of University of Niger and Tsuka UNN. In a statement by the Director of Media in the Oni's Palace, Moses Olafare, the, he said the appointment letter was signed by the Minister of Education, Adamu Andabu, on behalf of the President. The UNIS media director applauded Buhari for recognizing the efforts of the monarch in fostering peace and unity among Nigerians. According to him, the UNI will bring his wealth of experience and connections to promote unity and the harmonious working relationships in the university. The president has also appointed Tolu Gunlesi as a special assistant on digital and new media. According to a statement issued by presidential spokesperson Femi Adeshino, Ogunlesi, who is a renowned blogger and journalist, graduated from the University of Ibadan in 2004 and obtained an MA in creative writing from the University of East Anglia, United Kingdom in 2011. Before his appointment, Ogun Lessi had worked as a features editor and editorial board member of a national newspaper. He also worked as a West African editor for the African Report magazine from 2014 to 2015. 
We'll take a short break now. When we come back, we'll look at more top stories. Stay tuned. <music> Hello, you're welcome. You're watching the Funny White Man Show, which is the biggest, the brightest, and the most entertaining show in Africa. Funny you White Man. Funny White Man. Funny White Man. Funny White Man. But this is where you talk. Yeah. Too much. Yeah. Give me 5,000 man that you. <laughs> too much. So you get to like, make sure you move along the street. Ah, yeah, make sure like, I'm going girl. You know, my own people. Ah, yeah. Charlie. Yeah. yeah, fine. It's fun. I enjoy it. And I'm one of those very few. I'm that forever true. sticking in person now. Very good. I will listen to 160 million Nigerians are corrupt. How? My brother, I'm looking for you. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's a growth and this is the time to build business and know the pitfalls and know what to do and what not to do. But there are months where you get business and months... You know how we do, how we turn up. <laughs> we did the way you did it. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, you're welcome. You're watching Trending Matters on the Funny White Man Show. Of course, they will bring you trending issues just to entertain and tickle your fancy. Welcome back. The acute scarcity of foreign exchange, especially the United States dollar, has made the Naira trade at 390 at the parallel market. Foreign exchange dealers said the increasing pressure on the Naira is caused by high demand for the dollar by importers and speculators. Nigerian stocks also fell almost 2%, hit by a major decline in cement companies' shares, including Dangote Cement, which accounts for a third of local boards' capitalization. This comes as importers scrambled for the dollar to meet their overseas obligations. The official rate, however, remained at 197 to the dollar. Nigeria's government is concerned that further depreciation will hurt poor Nigerians, but the bank's refusal to revise the pegged exchange rate has widened a gap between official rates and the parallel market. Oil prices slid on Friday but are set for their first weekly increase this month as talk of a coordinated plan by producers to freeze output levels was tempered by a record build in U.S. crude inventories. Brent's futures were down 35 cents at $33.93 a barrel, while U.S. crude was slipped, slipped by 36 cents but to $30.41 a barrel. Oil prices had risen by more than 14% earlier in the week on Saudi Arabia and Russia's agreement to freeze output at January levels. Iraq's oil minister Adel Abdul Mahdi said on Thursday that talks would continue between OPEC and non-OPEC members to find ways to restore normal oil prices after a meeting in Tehran on Wednesday next week. U.S. warplanes have carried out attacks on militants from the so-called Islamic State in Libya, killing at least 30 people. The targets for the strikes on Friday included an ISIS training camp and a senior Tunisian extremist leader, Nuruddin Kochan, U.S. officials said. Intelligence officials are working to determine whether Kochan, a major Islamic State facilitator, was actually killed in the strikes. He is linked to two attacks in Tunisia last year, including a resort shooting that killed 30 British nationals. Police have arrested Uganda's main opposition presidential candidate a day after tightly contested elections. Kiza Bazige was detained during a raid on his party's headquarters in the capital Kampala as he was about to hold a press conference. Tear gas was also fired outside the building with a quarter of votes counted. President Yuwiri Musveni is leading official results have shown. He's running for a fifth term after 30 years in power. The Nigerian Football Federation has reappointed Manuel Gaba as the head of the Nigerian under-17 national team, the Golden Eaglets. The NFF decided to reappoint Gaba after promoting his predecessor, Emmanuel Amonike, following his success at the 2015 FIFA Under-17 World Cup in Chile. His appointment was confirmed in a statement by the NFF, which also confirmed Bala Niku as head coach of the under-17 female team. Garba, who was the head coach of the victorious Eaglets team in 2013, would be assisted by Atuni Ali and Ernest Tegpanyu. 
Manchester United's woeful season reached new lows on Thursday evening as the club lost its first leg of its Europa League second round tie to Danish champions Midtjylland. Manager Louis van Gogh, who had admitted prior to the game that the club's only chance of making the Champions League was through the European League, blamed the loss on the laws of Murphy. Goalkeeper David De Gea suffered a knee injury before the match, taking the club's injury toll to 17, and Van Gogh has now confirmed that the club will need to perform a scan to determine the extent of his injury. Manchester United will attempt to revive their season with an FA Cup fifth-round clash against Shrewsbury on Monday. That's all we have on news now. We thank you very much for watching. I'm Thelma Okoro.